Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and we're in our D&D 4.0 testing world where we have the 2024 player's handbook, uh, whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, I thought we would do a video on, because 4.0 is really interesting because there's a lot of updates um, and a lot of improvements and things like that. So one of the things I thought we would walk through is building a player character uh, using the new rules. Now, I have to be really careful about not showing you. I've got part of the PHB up on screen at the moment, but I'm not going to be showing you loads of it. I need to be really careful about copyright and things like that, of course. So um, just want to talk about how we build a character and show you how you build a brand new character uh, in 4.0 because it's kind of slick. So on the left here, we have indeed got the PHB. It's got create a character. Now it's got the steps one, choose a class, determine origin, ability scores, uh, alignment. If you use alignment, I don't use it. I think it's a ridiculous concept, but there we go. And then fill out the details. All right, so that's kind of the order of things we're going to follow. Um, but again, I don't want to um, reveal too much of what's going on. So first of all, choose a class. Now we're going to rebuild Sorryman. We've got our tables here. Now this is interesting for new players, this idea of how complex a character is to build. Now the chances are, if you're watching this video, it's because you've been using Foundry for a while, because you've been playing D&D even longer than that, and this probably doesn't really affect you, and you, you know what's an easy character and what's a harder character, even under the new rules. But it's a nice little touch, I think. So I want Barbarian. Let's call up Barbarian. We'll shrink that one down out of our way. So Barbarian is here, um, and we've got all those features and everything else. Um, put myself on the front page here. Uh, and we've got these beautiful images, and we've got these descriptions, and we've got these abilities. Now, we know we're going to play a Barbarian. So what we can do is we can go to our features, and we can click on Add Class. Now, this is, the, this is possibly going to answer questions for people. Um, notice there are two Barbarian classes. One of them is the SRD 5.1, so that's the SRD, um, but there's also the PHB version of it. And on the left here, we've got the sources, Player's Handbook 2024 and the SRD, the System Reference Document. Now, we don't want the SRD ones, we want the Player's Handbook ones. Somebody will have the answer to this. If you bought the 2014 Player's Handbook, through Foundry, do you have both of those books listed here? It'd be really, I mean, it, it this is suggesting that's the case, because um, that would be amazing. For those people who are kind of going, oh, well, 4.0, can I use my 2020, uh, my 2014 characters and stuff? This would absolutely be the answer. Um, I don't want the SRD one, so I can either, if I tick that, it's gonna give me only SRD, and if I tick it so it's red, it's going to not have the SRD. I can also click the PHB 2024 green arrow only give me those. So here we go. I clicked on add class and I can select my barbarian from here uh, and click select. Uh, and here we go. It's going to start that character building for me nice and easy and just walk me through that. I've got a couple of skills to select. Um, survival. I'm basically rebuilding Sorryman here. Um, and we're going to take athletics for that. Uh, there we've got our armor training, we've got our weapon proficiencies, uh, weapon mastery. Now this is something new in the 2024 rules. Um, quarter staff, absolutely, we take quarter staff for Sorryman. Um, and uh, I was playing with um, him, taking him spear and shield at one point. Uh, da, 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 da. It doesn't really matter, does it? Why am I stuck on this? Because it doesn't really matter for this purpose. Um, I think Great Club makes uh, a bit of sense for him just because of the way he is. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to switch that out for just a normal club, to be honest. Um, it's going to give me these features. Rage, armor, unarmored defense, and weapon mastery. Okay, good. Should do so. Uh, and it's just adding all these things on us. Now, let's added all those on. Really nice and slick and smooth for us. 
Uh, and if we check on the table from the PHB, we should have Rage, Unarmored Defense, and Weapon Mastery. Now, here is something that is really cool. Now, we don't need, we've just added that and it's done it for us. But any of these, where it's got this little suitcase item next to it, it's an item. Primal Knowledge, I can drag that straight over from the PHB onto my characters and give him, I mean obviously he's not supposed to have it so I'm going to delete it again, but I can give him that ability. That is a really tasty feature that is built into the PHB um, because just spotting it for these, we're going to be able to do it with the equipment lists, um, uh, with feats and everything else and drag them straight from the PHB. Now bearing in mind there's no automation or anything so we haven't got to worry about am I using the the, the Gambit's version or the Chris's version or or DDBI's version or anything like that. We haven't got that. We've got nice, simple, straightforward item. You either have the item or you don't. The only complication might be, is it the 2014 or the 2024 item? So that's really straightforward. We now have our Barbarian uh, class in there. If we go right back to our front page, we can click on Species here. And again, just like with the classes, we get our list here. I'm going to click on the player's handbook 2024 so I can choose what my uh, what my um, my species is going to be gosh it's going to take a while to stop saying race isn't it um, <clears throat> now there is no variant human it's just human so that's what you're going to have to be um, yeah four to seven foot tall or small well we're not we're playing a medium human thank you very much sorry money is definitely human human not small human um, in fact, he's big human, really. <laughs> and I get to take a proficiency, uh, which is great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it's not giving me survival on here. I've already taken it, uh, which is great. Uh, what is going to be best for him? He's going to take... Uh, I think intimidation is probably perfectly acceptable. And it's going to give me these human traits. Now, what the heck do they mean? Well, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um and because we are human, we get this versatile, so we gain an origin feat of our choice. Now, this is where you kind of need to look through the PHB or be looking through here to decide what all of these things actually mean now. Now, I don't haven't looked up the new Tavern Brawler uh, to see if it's any good. I mean, to be perfectly honest, the 2014 one it is not the best use of a feat. It's really not. But Sorryman has it because it fits with who he is. So I'm going to give him Tavern Brawler just so that we can do that. Uh, and there we go. We've got our updated character sheet. So you can see we're humanoid human, uh, medium size in there, which is really good. We can go back to our features and we can see resourceful. You gain heroic inspiration whenever you finish a long rest, which is awesome. That Tavern Brawler is going to give us damage rerolls, enhanced unarmored strike, um, improvised weaponry and push. Well, push different from shove. When you hit a creature with an unarmed strike as part of an attack on your action, you can deal damage to the target and also push it five feet away from you. Uh, and you can use this benefit only once per turn. So it is like shove, except you can't shove them to the ground. You can only shove them away. Because if you remember 2014, the shove ability, you can choose, move them back or shove them to the floor. Uh, it's one of the reasons why sorry, when, um, uh had grapple. <laughs> we're basically holding on to people punching them in the face and throwing them to the floor um, but there we go <laughs> uh, and versatile you gain an origin feat yes we took tavern brawler and skillful we get a proficiency of our choice which we took intimidation okay cool so these things it's re this is really really easy isn't it really straightforward uh, next thing background so here are the backgrounds again we can filter them out and we can choose our appropriate background for our character now again some of these like noble still exists state sage still exists but you're going to want to check how that impacts your character because these have changed quite a bit so i'm not going to spend ages looking at that i'm going to have a quick look through um who what is going to work for him that's kind of uh, mm, yeah i'm not sure what would be a good background for him now um, I mean, it's not Hermit's not really quite right for him. Certainly wasn't a soldier or a guard. What are we talking about? Wayfarer. You grew up on the streets, surrounded by 
similar ill-fated casts off. That's probably the closest for him. So I'm going to select that. Uh, and then we're going to actually do our bits here. So your background allows you to increase dexterity, wisdom and charisma scores. Uh, increase one of them by two uh, and a different one by one. Or increase all three of them by one. Well, um, that background doesn't give me the constitution or the strength that I want, so I am going to take some dexterity, um, and I'm going to put the rest on charisma. Why? Who knows? Uh, languages are a bit different, so we get to choose two standard languages that he can speak. Now, this is frustrating. This is where I'll be talking to my DM and saying, hang on a minute. <laughs> In the background here, Soriman can speak if Infernal for a very particular reason uh, to do with his background. And I would be saying to the DM, can I, instead of having two common standard languages, can I please take one uh, restricted language and take Inferno? Infernal, not Inferno. <laughs> uh, let's take Goblin and let's take Orc, just because, why not? Um, Wayfarer, I get Thieves, Tools, Insight and Stealth. You know, this is not a great background at all for, for Soriman. I need to, obviously, I'm just building this to show you. Uh, background feat, your background grants, grants me the lucky feat. Now, that used to be the pretty much the best feat in the game, didn't it? Number of luck points equal to your proficiency bonus. So, two at level one. Um, when I roll D20 for a D20 test, you can spend one luck point to give you advantage on the roll. Uh, when a creature rolls against you, you can use a luck point to give it disadvantage. Oh, okay. Right, fair enough. A little foundry note there. Feature includes the appropriate number of uses and scales as you level up. The advantage and disadvantage activates uh, ex um, activities expend a use, uh, but do not enforce the advantage-disadvantage. Right, so you click it, it will use it, but then you manually have to select... Um, whether you're rolling with advantage, which makes sense because there's naff all automation, um, not compared to what we're used to. So, uh, yeah, Wayfarer is not the right background for Sorryman at all, um, but there we go. It's more kind of showing you what we can do with this, which is good. Now, obviously, we've got our, um, our roles here um, that we can manually input. We can use our... We can still use the chat and do slash R... Three, uh, four D six uh, K H, which should give us four D six. Oh dear, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Stupid boy. <laughs> I want to roll four D six. Keep highest three. I think that's it. There we go. So we've got ourselves an eleven, uh, oh, a seventeen, a six, an eight a 12 and a 10 that's absolutely pants isn't it um but there we go so we can use that and we can then distribute our stuff as we want to if we want to actually uh we actually want to do that so um what do i need to do i need to put a maximum ability score so that's its normal oh i want to put it in there don't i so 17 in there i'm going to give myself a 12 in my dex um, no, I'm going to give myself 12 in my con, 11 in my dex. Hmm, uh, did that add on? Hang on a minute. Did that already add on? It added on my one for charisma. Did it add on my extra for my, my dex I put it in? So actually that 11 should be 13 because I told it to add two. Uh, and I'm going to put six in there and eight in there. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, and we've now got our character... Um, stats in there at all even though those roles are abysmal obviously you can use point by you know a standard array however you choose to do it um, I normally do the 4d6 and you roll that six times and that's your set um, and then I get I ask my players if they want to reject it if they do reject it they can roll a second set but then they have to pick from those two and that's it so they might get a really good set. They might get two really bad sets. Tough. Um, my job as the DM is to balance the game if I end up with a party of complete weaknesses. But to be honest, they, these stats don't have a massive impact. If you've got a player who just charges into every battle, the stats will not save them. 
And if you've got a really smart player who thinks about tactics and the way that they're going to approach approach problems and encounters, then the stats don't hinder them or particularly help them um, outside of your primary stats. So I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, Soriman is very uneducated, so that's fine. You know, <laughs> I, I could, I absolutely could live with that. I'm just my con's a bit lower than I would like, but yeah, I could deal with it. All right, so we've got all of that in there. We've got our initiative. We've got our... I haven't put a picture in. Obviously, I would need to do that. Our walk speed's all set for us. Um, we're kind of almost ready to go as is, aren't we? Which is brilliant. Well, we would need to obviously look at our starting equipment. It talks about that. I get an explorer's pack so I can dump that in. I get four hand axes, apparently. Yeah, it said one. So I need to up that. Uh, and a great axe. Now again, as the DM, or, or sorry, if I as a player, I'd be saying to the DM, "Hang on a minute, I don't want this starting equipment. I definitely want to change stuff out." Um, and I would be immediately dropping that great axe and taking a quarter staff. So my problem with starting equipment is it's really very simplistic to get you started fast. I'm talking through this, and we've already built a character. Um, but it is quite restrictive because I am absolutely not going to take that. I give me the money. I'm going to go spend the money, um, and somewhere it probably tells you how much money you get if you do that. Um, but we're not going to walk through that anymore. Okay, so that's easy, isn't it? Really easy way to build a character. Have I missed anything obvious? Uh, I definitely yeah. So I've got my quarter staff weapon mastery there and my club weapon mastery. But that's what I mean. I've taken those weapon masteries. I don't have that equipment. I have no doubt any DM I've ever played with, if I said, hey, I want to have a quarter staff, they just have a quarter staff. Don't even bother about the pennies. <laughs> it <doesn't... laughs> it's a quarter staff. You're not, you're not asking for plate mail armor. Um, so that's not a drama. It's also because of background, I automatically get thieves tools. I didn't get a choice because of that background I picked. So in some ways it's quite restrictive and I suspect there'll be quite a lot of negotiating. So uh, I'm sorry man wouldn't have thieves tools. Doesn't make any sense for him whatsoever. So I'd be having that conversation about changing them out for, you know, a like for like a different tool set. Yeah, go for it. Um, and we should be able to do that quite easily by just coming into, um, coming into here and finding what we need. Uh, unfortunately, no Ripper's Omni Search. <laughs> which is something I would seriously miss with that move over before those mods are available but I'm not running games in 4.0 until those mods have caught up um, just because uh, it's just going to be too uh, too too um, restrictive for running games um, and also I haven't done money and things like that but the class features and stuff that was really really simple to bring in and the fact that you can drag and drop stuff from the PHB, those items directly. In fact, actually, let's have a quick look at doing that. Again, without showing too much of it, let's go to equipment, let's go to weapons. Yeah, um, and um, weapon properties, weapons table, there we go. Uh, he wants a club. I've got my club. Where's my quarter staff? I've got my quarter staff. Get rid of that great axe. He's not going to use it. See how easy that is. I mean, that's just a breath of fresh air, isn't it? Um, being able to do that. Let's make sure we equip that. Thank you very much. Um, am I getting my... Yep, so I've got my one from Dex. So one from Dex, one from Constitution, which is giving me my armor class as it should be for that, which is great. So, uh, yeah, just a simple little video, really, just to walk you through that's what it's like with the 2024 manual in 4.0 if that's your jam um you know again i'm i've just started reading through the 2024 php um so i might have missed other little shortcuts of like oh you haven't done this you haven't done that um or why didn't you take that background because it fits that character better yeah yeah <laughs> It's for dem demonstration purposes only, um, but I will at some point spend some time and remake a couple of my favourite characters, like Sorryman, like Haley Longbreeze, uh, and remake them in um, in Foundry Four Point. Sorry, in 
the 4.0 D&D engine just to see how they come out and it's a really good way to understand the differences between the 2014 and the 2024 rules is put them in action all right that's it for this video just a just a really a little showcase of um of how you can do that how you can build stuff nice and easy and simple we are not going to turn this channel into a 4.0 only um because we're not running games in it so there's no point in doing that so we will go back to our slightly more usual stuff um until further along when we're ready to make that jump or rather when 4.0 and the mods are ready for us then we will dive into this stuff a bit deeper thank you for watching do appreciate it uh, and one last thing before i go i very much appreciate our new channel members thank you very much very much appreciated welcome aboard uh, and to all our new subscribers we've had a little spurt recently which is lovely um yeah welcome aboard uh, advice for anybody watching these videos is always have a look at the comments because I say things and then somebody potentially corrects me in the comments. That happens. Um, but other people have got really good ideas, really good links to resources and stuff like that. So it's always worth reading the comments. I do try to pin the most useful one or what I think is the most useful one. Uh, so it's always worth checking them out. But once again, thank you to everybody, all of you, for watching, for the subscribers and for the channel members. And I will see you in the next one.